Okay, sandblasting. I had three taps on my sandblasting tank. One introduced air to the blaster, another one bypassed the blasting media, and then the third tap mixed the media in. To start with, I was constraining the tap that mixed the media into the air at the end, uh, mainly because I got really badly ripped off on my media. I actually paid three times what it's worth, and I had no idea. And I was going to try and get as much work done as I could with 75 kilos of Garnet. Everybody says you can run Garnet through your blaster about four times. Um, I actually found you can just keep on running it through the blaster. The only thing is it gets a little finer. It's, it probably doesn't have as much tooth. It doesn't hit the work as hard and it gets a lot dustier because as you sift that media back into your blaster, you're, you're recycling all the rust and all the paint with it. I found a joint in Melbourne that gave me a really good deal on blasting media. I got a lot of Garnet, um, I'll tell you where at the end of the video. After I had heaps of media, the, the limiting factors were my time, the amount of air I could supply, and the amount of ceramic blasting tips I had, and they do wear out fast. I had just enough air to make this worth doing, about 18 cubic feet per minute, so I wanted there to be no restrictions between the air compressors and the tip where I, of the blaster where I needed to create the pressure. So it was all taps open with a pressure regulator on the entrance of the uh, tank and I, I pulled that down to about 90 psi just so that the air compressor could hopefully get ahead of the uh, blaster. When I first started I used a fabric hood with uh, safety glasses and I taped up around the edge to stop the media from getting in and um, I thought I was doing really good, um, but you know, the media that bounces back, it, it blasts that plastic, it ends up matching no time, you end up completely blind, you're tripping over stuff, you can't even see where to aim the media. Uh, what I found was, you've got to have glass. I, I looked online and I found a, a specific sandblasting helmet and it was $500 and I wasn't going to pay for that because that, that's a lot of paint and materials. Uh, so I made something out of a... Uh, uh, a plastic grinding visor and then I took just took some window glass and taped it over the top to stop the media from matting off that plastic. With this face shield I, I taped the uh, hessian bag from the blasting media on the back to stop it from filling in with media from the back and I taped an old t-shirt down the front and that was going to allow a bit of air to come through. It was big enough I could have a uh, hearing protection on underneath it and a, a dust mask as well. So I kept going blind when I was sandblasting. When I was recycling the media too many times, it got really dusty, you can't see anything. You need like a really strong hard light right on where you're working. Um, I had a, a tungsten work light on a stand, and it was, it was very good, but for inside the cabin, I had a lot of problems aiming it. Um, when I was climbing in and out of the cabin, I was tripping over the stand, I was tripping over the cables, Remember, in good conditions, you're still half blind with that stupid thing on your head. Um, so I got rid of the stand and I just clamped the work light directly onto the car. And that was, uh, if you could aim it, it was a lot better. I tried to get away with not sifting my media. Big mistake. Blocked every two seconds. The smallest flake of paint will completely block your blaster, even if it's a much smaller than the tip. Um, I thought my work was pretty clean. That's why I thought I'd get away with it. It was, uh, I'd almost ground and wire wheeled the thing completely clean. It was just a few nooks and crannies I had to blast a bit of surface rust out of. Uh, but you know, one bit of, one crumb of seam sealer, that's it, you're blocked and it kills you. You can, it's no trouble sifting the media. You can get a nice big funnel, which I got in the paint store, it sits on top of the blaster, and then you make a, I made a strainer out of this milk crate and some fly screen mesh. Uh, the steel kind, of course, and I just shoveled it in. It was actually no trouble at all. I'd discourage blasting a shell to anyone who had 18 CFM or less. I think, you know, if you had 22 or 24, you're actually going to have a really sweet time with the right gear. Um, of course, more is better. You get as much air as you can, and then you need to tune the whole system to work well with the amount of air you have. You can, um, you can tune in some efficiency. So what you need is you need the, the blasting media, the faster it comes out and hits the work, the more uh, effective and efficient it's going to be. And so the pressure creates the speed. 
Now, all air compressors will create a higher pressure. Um, when you shop for one and they're quoting the, they quote the amount of pressure that they'll make, and then they also quote a flow rate. The flow rate's a lot more important. Now, when you're reading through the print on your uh, air compressor for sale, it actually quotes you a flow rate without pressure. Your flow rate's actually going to be less when your tank is under pressure. So a 16 CFM air compressor without load, uh, when you've got 100 PSI in the tank, it's probably only going to be a 10 CFM air compressor. So with all the taps opened up on your blaster and you're trying to get your work done, you're losing all that pressure through that tip, you need to be able to pump a volume of air to keep that pressure up while the air is flowing through. So you need to constrain that airflow, which creates the pressure, enough to so that the, the airflow through the tip is slower than the airflow through your air compressors. And uh, after I got all my work done and using worn out ceramic tips that are way too big and having a really hard time with it, I found a really good chart. Uh, it gives you ratios. Uh, you can you can cross-reference how much air you got, exactly what kind of tip you want. It's um, a really good bit of information. I'll, I'll put it in the notes. So for me, I had 18 CFM. Um, I wanted to blast it about 100 PSI, wasn't going to happen, was hoping for 90. What I really needed was a 3 mil tip to blast through, to be able to maintain that much pressure with the amount of volume that I could produce at that pressure. If you do blast at a lower pressure, your ceramic tips are going to last a lot longer, but um, I, would, I would suggest anyone doing more than a couple of panels, you want to go out there and buy the tungsten carbide tip, which is actually designed for blasting at high pressure. It's going to last a lot longer. It's going to get you through the job. You're not going to be wasting your time blasting at low pressure. All your meat is just hosing out there, not coming out fast enough and hard enough, and you just you feel stupid. Be careful about the duty cycle of your air compressor. If it's not a heavy industrial unit, it's not supposed to run full time. It's probably got a duty cycle of about one to one, meaning it should be switched off for as much time as it's switched on so it doesn't overheat. Another thing, you've got to protect your air compressor from that uh, abrasive dust. It will probably kill it faster than cooking it. I put mine under the bench and hung some sheets over it. This trapped all the heat in but I knew you, I had to keep it away from that abrasive dust. If you're doing something similar, shell, no panels, um, I'm going to recommend 200 kilograms of garnet, five ceramic tips, two to four days of labor, and you'll probably need to change the glass on your visor three times.